With uh, August being uh, Women's Month, um, a lot of focus is is obviously on on, on things like gender equality, uh, gender-based violence. You know, getting women their rightful place, uh, not only in society but also in terms of finances and things like that. And I've got uh, Janine Horn here today uh, as a financial advisor at Momentum to just talk about some of the little intricacies and, and maybe tip, tips and tricks for women to to kind of level the playing field themselves, take charge of their own futures and really just make a difference, uh, you know, for their own futures. Uh, Janine, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chris, and good afternoon, listeners. You're absolutely right. You know, part of Women's Month is more than just celebrating us being women. It's more than just bringing to the fore topical issues around us. You know, we take care of our physiques, we take care of our families, and we set all these goals, even in our relationships. And so for me, the big issue that needs to be spoken about more is the economic inequality relating to both gender, us as women, and gender and race. And that's one of those unspoken issues at the moment. And my encouragement through this piece is to, to chat to, to my fellow women and speak about how we can raise awareness, how we can create advocacy around it, and more importantly, create a movement, an en masse movement. There's the 2030 Global Plan that speaks of gender and economic equality. And so we're running very close to 2030. And, and this, is, this is the takeoff from, from the piece that, that we're discussing here today. So there are two things that I want to highlight is, you know, the 42% the of households are headed up by us women. We, we lead the charge in households, but we are behind our male counterparts in what is known as a financial, financially knowledgeable person, FKPs as we call them. And so we are behind our male counterparts, even though we head up such a large component of the households. And then there's that median pay gap so the gender pay gap is around 22 to 23 to 35%. And that's a big difference. We're not talking 2%. And, and that needs to also change. We need, we need corporates to be aware of that. And us as women need to get our financial voices to, to speak up around that. Um, you know, we of all ages, we, we are earning less, but we're doing more with the money that we earn less from. And so we sacrifice education, we sacrifice career goals to pay uh, and contribute to society and households more than our male counterparts. We take care of family. There's these unknown price factors like the gifts to the family, like the contributions to functions, like taking off time for the kids and the care and the medical care. And, and, and so it just comes out of pocket. And so we put ourselves last. We generally earn less, we save less, we have less, but we actually live longer. And so not only are we ill prepared for living longer into old age, we are also cutting our nose to spite our faces because we do not journey with the appropriate tools. We do not take advice early enough. And our male counterparts are way ahead of us in that regard. And so when we bring these issues to the forefront, we say, what is it that we need to do? So we are known as this resilient, formidable force. But I want to turn resilient on, resilience on its head today. And I want to say, I'm tired of being resilient. I want to tell my fellow women, let's not have this resilience badge of honor all the time. Let's actually be aggressive and relentless and difficult as we are labeled, right? And so when we open our mouths, that's what we are labeled. Let's be relentless at going for this economic gender equality. Let's understand what economic abuse is and know and recognize when we are being economically abused, whether it be with an employer, a business partner or a spouse. This is real. So, you know, we talk about this gender-based violence, um, massive uh, thing in our country at this moment in time. 
and it's just getting worse. I saw a tweet the other day that said, um, so if New Zealand had lost the game on Saturday, there would have been a spike in gender-based violence. I'm going, the interesting part of that is we recognize it as physical and then emotional and mental. Economic needs to be included in that movement. It needs to be included in that voice. And so financial planning and investment planning needs to be adopted early on. When we recognize that we are being infringed, that we are being economically uh, abused, it's a strong statement, but it's as strong as any other gender-based violence uh, process, right? How do we now start recovering and getting our financial voices? How do we become capable and how do we stay relentlessly aggressive about it? So that 2030, we can stand proud and say, we contributed to, towards that. That is that is my contribution today to all our listeners out there. Um, and so let's start with financial capabilities. It's like looking at the status quo and analyzing and saying, how do I develop an action plan now that I recognize and analyze where I'm at? How do I move forward with an action plan that is implementable, that is uh, trackable, that is traceable, and that I can measure progress. So similarly, like we plan, again, physics and family and parties and functions and kids, this needs that total dedication to planning. It needs that discipline. It needs that structure. And we show up in all parts of our lives. So this is one of that that I'm calling all my fellow women to show up and so when we become financially capable, we can understand that we need to track our progress. We can understand where we sit at the moment and what actions in between needs to take place to get to our goal. It's almost like having the end goal in mind and working and tracking backwards and going, okay, this is the starting point. When we become financially literate, the concept of financial literacy, Chris, is the ability to make sense of money for our purpose, other than the purpose of others, as I've alluded to earlier, right? It's that money sense, it's that money mindfulness, and not the guilt of putting ourselves first in money, not the guilt of investing in ourselves. And having that discipline structure, creating that budget that includes us financially, not just the other parts of us. And so financial literacy, I find, is lacking, even though we know how to deal with money. If you think about the copious, the numerous single mothered households that make it work, mm. that juggle from Peter to pay Paul to look after Joe, to look after Pam, we make it work. And so we make it work, but not enough for ourselves. And so being financially literate is the ability to say, I'm mindful of the money sense that I need to take on for myself. I'm mindful of the journey and the trajectory that I can change, not only for me, but for every other woman, girl, child that follows me, right? I am capable of saying, what are my wants and needs? How can I be strict about this splitting of wants and needs? And then how can I ensure that my financial needs, my financial goals are part of the household budget. There's a skewness in that household budget in that we have these non-priced goods, as I mentioned. And so how do we equal the paying fields? How do we go to the partners and the business partners alike and the spouses and go, let's create an equal financial playing field. If the salaries are weighted, I want to contribute according to my weighting if you are the breadwinner. More importantly, we're in this financial partnership together. I need to know what goes on in your money life. And similarly, I need you to understand that there is a skewness. I may be earning less, but there's a skewness to this. And I want us to equal the playing fields a bit, right? And then the ability to find the financial voice. The financial voice is the ability to make sound decisions out loud, to have those critical conversations that maybe takes us from, 
from a bit of financial chaos, mm -hmm. from financial abuse, from economic inequality, from gender and racial pay gap inequality, to out loud advocate, advocating against it, mm -hmm. standing up for yourself, and having the necessary conversation. So you know when you have that awkward conversation, this the legs are lame, the mind goes blank, the tummy is nervous. It's similar to dating. If I were to meet you tomorrow for the first time, I'd have the same effect, right? But we get through the date, don't we? And so this is the bit where we get through that uncomfortable hurdle and this magic on the outside of discomfort. Gotcha. And that magic we need to create for ourselves, Chris. Okay. Janine, well done. I think a strong voice, strong message, important message. I think, uh, you know, and, and obviously from, you know, we could also just do support, you know, support that and, and put the put the message out there. Um, there's a long way to go, I think, and, and you'll agree with me. But it's through, through interactions like this that we take that message out there and hopefully reach so many more people. Um, thank Absolutely. you for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, good luck. Uh, it's important work that you do. Well done. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris.